Hey guys, Andy here, and welcome back to Let's Meet Adam. So I had to delete my file and download the new update because people were having issues uh, attaining the perfect ending or the true end, something like that. Uh, and just FYI, I had no issues and it started out right where I left off. So I'm hoping they'll let me get whatever ending, the perfect ending. I don't think I'm going to get that. At least not on my first go. Oh no. Wrong one. Whoops. That's not what I meant. My bad. See, I'm already having issues because I'm before. I'm the idiot here. Well, so much for an intro. <laughs> Ah, uh, we're in talk with Lars. I'll go over to the fireplace where they're chilling. Just look up Pierce and Kang, though. God, thirsty much? They're all over Lars. Making any excuse to poke or touch the guy. It's pathetic, but I also feel a little bit jealous. Just in time. Hi, Adam. Would you guys give Lars some breathing space? Like vultures. As if you aren't over here with an agenda of your own. What agenda? All I know is we should call it a day and have a threesome already. Someone's always laid down to get to business. Pierce laughs jokingly, but I think Lars and Kane can sense that he's not completely kidding. There's four of us here, Pierce. I thought you'd have to be able to count to be a personal trainer. You're a personal trainer? Yeah, you know that gym 24-7 fitness. That's where I work. Oh yeah, the one down here. That's a huge gym. You okay there, nosebleed? Try again, you can jump on the bed. Oh, it's crazy busy. I'm new, but I'm starting to get a bunch of steadies. Sounds like prostitution. Hey, don't hate just because you can't keep up with me. I think he means steady clients. Obviously. And I'm certain I can keep up. Perhaps you can't tell from the suit, but I think you'd be pretty happy with what you saw underneath it all. Besides, that gym is merely a front for a bathhouse, more or less. The stories I hear about that place, frightful. Uh -huh, it ain't so bad, that's why I feel right at home there. Guys, guys, I think we're all veering away from the point here. But it's fun, isn't it? What about you, Lars? What do you work out? You know, as a personal trainer, I can meet clients at their gyms. Or their homes. Haha, <laughs> alright, so although I'm flattered, I'm good, thank you. I have a terrific personal trainer working with me that I've known now for years. Sometimes I request that he travel overseas with me so we can continue our workout plan. Anyways, not to brag, it's not a secret. He's a celebrity coach and trainer. So he's used to working with my crazy schedule. But man, oh man, speaking of which, I'm just so glad to be here with you all. Uh, I've been so stressed from work. But my request was accepted, and I got the invite for tonight. I just about yelled. No way, they put you on the waiting list too? That's so uncool. No, no, I didn't mind. I don't think any of us should have special treatment. Well, the point is, you're here now, and it'll be fun tonight. We'll make it fun. I have a feeling we're going to break the escape time record tonight without a doubt. Right, gentlemen? I'm in. Sounds good to me. With me here to guide us, I'm sure we stand in at some chance. I work as a real estate agent, but in my spare time, escape rooms have been my latest obsession. You know what my latest obsession is? Spending money I don't have on goddamn Funko Pops. For fuck's sake, I just spent like $100 in the past two days. I've driven to Orange County and even further to try as many escape rooms as possible. Uh, none of them compare to Escape Mansion we have, though. We all grin at each other. There's definite excitement in the air tonight. Now let me turn off my ringer. I don't, it's Dylan, don't worry. <laughs> so to you, Vince, Earl, and Lucky now. Uh, they stood chatting to the left side of the fireplace, sheltered by a corner of books. They appeared to be in serious conversation, and Adam wasn't sure if he should interrupt. Oh, hey, Adam, what's up? Not much. What are you guys talking about? Um, nothing. Nothing, really. Ooh, sounds exciting. Speaking of exciting, I hope they start this soon. 
It's not like we've been waiting that long. It's only been 15 minutes since Lars got here. Actually, we're just getting to know each other, right guys? That's what's just sounding as how things have been for both of you as actors so far. Well, actually, it started out as a Nowgram celebrity, more or less. Yes, you know all about those Nowgram celebrities. Getting paid uh, $200,000 for a fucking post. Yeah. You know, 2 million followers. Impressive. Earl not said, seeming intrigued where this was going. That many, huh? I don't have as many as that. I'll probably never even get close to that number. But maybe someday I'll have at least triple what I have now. That would be cool. If that's what you even want. Oh, it's awesome. It's opened so many doors for me. I mean, the encouragement from my fans is what made me move out to LA. But I'm open-minded. I'm pursuing acting, but maybe I can be a model or a motivational speaker. Everyone's lucky I don't do face cam right about now. Our celebrity personal trainer for Lars. I smile snugly. The world is your oyster, huh? Hope not. I think oysters are gross. I think all seafood is gross. Except for fish sticks. Fish sticks are good. Although I haven't had any in a while. I should probably get some this week. Well, I work in the video game industry, and like you, someday I hope to work on a masterpiece that the whole world remembers. It's really boosted my confidence. I mean, being surrounded by like-minded people, good for you, Lucky. I'm sure we'll all make it out of there. What about you, Earl? Do you want to be famous? Honestly, I think I'd rather be infamous. Vince and Lucky chuckle along with Earl, but I don't really get it. Uh, of course you don't, Adam. Adam wanders over to the sofa where Bart and Steve are sitting. Hey guys, what's up? I don't get what this is a big deal. So, it's Lars Bronson. So what? Are you jealous or something? Who cares either way? I agree. It's disgusting how those two are throwing themselves at him, though. But you gotta admit, Steve, it's pretty sweet how he's here. It's not every day you get to meet a star like Lars, especially spending a whole night with him at an escape room. I'm super stoked that he's here, so any opinion I have is biased. You think? I thought you guys were here just shooting the shit, getting to know each other. Oh, but we were, except that Mr. Steve let here lights playing at Dark and Mysterious. Though he mentioned he funds documentaries. I do indeed, but that's not true that I keep things close to my chest. There's just not much... There's not... Uh, there's just not much worth mentioning. Steve lets out a yawn. What about you, Bart? What's to know? It's not as if I'm going to see any of you people again after tonight anyways. What's that supposed to mean? This one is a ray of sunshine, isn't he? Hey, look, I'm not being an ass. I'm just being realistic. Who knows? Maybe we'll leave here with a few of us as buds. In my experience just is not how it works, that's all. As a community in general, we need to start being nicer to each other. Yeah, we're done. I start to wonder if we might need more scotch. <sighs> I fucking hate that noise. It's like hearing that bastion sound from Uprising and Overwatch. I, I'm so bothered by that now. I can't hear Bastion without hating him. A strange noise accompanied by static vibrated throughout the library, causing everyone to stop dead in their tracks. A second or two pass, then a deep distorted male voice crackles into existence. Good evening, gentlemen, and thank you for your patience. Welcome to Skate Match in WeHo. I'm glad each of you was able to make it tonight, and we'll begin shortly. Most of you are new, so first we'll go into the format and eventually the ground rules for tonight. The Skate Match in WeHo is known for its unique format. Unlike any other escape room, you'll have 9 hours to escape and achieve success. The reward for success, you ask? The experience, of course. And your life. Jesus Christ, that's intense. Shit, I'm nervous, guys. Each room is locked from the inside by large metal doors. Solve the puzzles in the room, and you should be able to unlock it and move on to the next room. There are several rooms to solve before you can reach the final room and exit. 
at which point the final room opens back up to the reception area where you'll collect your things and gratefully get out. The PA crackles for a second. There's also a second method to escape this nightmare, but perhaps if you learn something, you'll figure out how. Oof, sending chills up my spine. This is already better than my first experience. I'm thrilled. But don't be intimidated, gentlemen. This is supposed to be fun, and I'd like you to enjoy your limited time here. I try to be humble, but I can proudly say that no one has ever been let down by their experience here at Skate Mansion WeHo. Also, each room is fitted with multiple hidden cameras. I'll be monitoring your progress, and of course, your safety. I wish you some luck. Keep strong, and I'm sure by the end of the night, I'll get to see what's inside each and every one of you. Ha 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 The voice goes into a menacing, almost inhuman laugh. Well, what are you all waiting for? I've opened the door to the next room for you, where the fun really begins. Proceed, and lastly, I'll explain a few simple rules, and we are good to go. Welcome to Skate Mansion WeHo! You heard the man. Let's go. Come on, pussies. Let's fucking show that creep. We've got the biggest balls around here. I'm not sure what you mean, Paris, but yes, I haven't been this stoked for something in a long time. I'm not nervous anymore, Adam. I I'm excited for this. I know we can do it. Lucky raises a shaking fist and scrunches up his smiling face and is into a determined one. Whew, oh boy. All right. I guess this is it. Seriously, let's kick some escape room ass. With your smart zero and Kane's experience, I bet you we all make it out of here before nine hours is up. We probably even have time to grab a drink or something after. Uh, let's just focus on the task at hand and we'll negotiate that after. These idiots think it's going to be easy as long as we all work together. <laughs> Bart folds his arms and puffs out his burly chest. Luckily, I'm not underestimating how hard this is going to be. Adam, you and me... We should stick together. No matter what. Red smiles as Adam and him fist bump. Why do I get the feeling tonight is going to get messy? You mean like a hot mess? Most likely. Escape Mansion WeHo, the movie starring Lars Bronson as Lars Bronson. Lars then brings down his brows and makes a full serious face. Man, wouldn't that be the worst B, B, B movie ever made? Now that would be Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, and I have a, I really want to watch that film again, because that was brilliant. Anyways, gents, I think we should head on in. we got a long night ahead of us. No, Plan 9 from Outer Space. That's the worst fucking movie I've ever seen. That's the biggest joke of all. Alright, 13 minutes in. Okay. Whoa. I have my pendant hat. I'm ready for this. The nine men look in the amazement as the dark room laid out before them. It appeared that the entire room was sectioned into two, possibly three other rooms. The room they were in specifically was almost pitch black. So dark in fact that they couldn't tell where the walls were or where one wall met another. The only thing they could see was an illuminated room separating them with a pane of thick glass. The room itself was lit brightly by white blue fluorescent lights and was as clean and sterile looking as a clinic. Something threatening permeated the ambience, but the group was too excited to take notice. Oh, what is this? This is all new. I've not seen this room before. Kane claps his hands together with an exhilarated expression. I mean, it's cool. It's totally different from the library we were just in. Not bad. I gotta admit, I'm impressed. Before we could really get settled, the voyeur voice came on again. Now that we are all here, let's go over the rules. Shall we? Remember how I mentioned each room has its own puzzle to solve? Well, the rooms themselves have rules of conduct that I strictly enforce. There are two kinds of rooms. This, for instance, is a puzzle room. After this room, you will no longer be solving puzzles as a group. Instead, you will separate into teams of your choice based on my rules. These rules govern what combination of you may enter a puzzle room. We'll go into the specifics of that shortly. Patience is golden. Listening is even more so. It could save your life. 
The other type of room are foyers like the one you pass through to get to the library. Each puzzle room is connected to a foyer that leads into another puzzle room, so on and so forth. The foyers are the only place where you will all congregate again as a group. In other words, foyers contain multiple doors to different puzzle rooms. Enough for the whole fucking family! And with that, I'd like to invite our honored guest, Mr. Lars Bronson, and only Lars, to help me with the demonstration, if you please. Lars looks around at us with a surprised but happy expression. He points to the center of his chest with his finger. Me? I'm honored. Alright, what do you need me to do? The loud sound of a door opening up makes us look to the right of the glass panel. Nasty fluorescent light pours into the room. I can't stand fluorescent light. Dude, me too. I fucking hate light, fluorescent lights. Mr. Bronson, if you would enter the bright room, we can begin. Alright, here we go. See you guys on the other side. Lars walks toward the door, passing each one of us with all eyes locked on his broad back. Pierce spots him as he passes and I hear Earl say, You're good, don't worry about it. Lars stops for a second to smile at him, I guess, and then walks through the door which automatically shuts behind him. When Lars gets in, he starts looking around the room casually. Hey Lars, can you hear us? Yeah, I can still hear you. It's a little faint though. Lucky and the rest of the guys start waving at him. Excellent. Let's continue. Remember how I mentioned rules? There are a few things I really hate, and one of them is people who take advantage. And another are those who make excuses. Whoa, what the hell? The voice started sounding really fucked up. I look over at the other guys and some of them seem fine, but I could tell definite I could definitely tell Lucky was uncomfortable. Every room is outfitted with a death trap. If you violate the rules in any way, the death trap will activate automatically, killing everyone in the room, neither instantly nor pleasantly. Fierce, they've really amped up this time. And of course, if you haven't escaped by the end of the nine hours, then all the death traps will go off at once. Killing any remaining guests without mercy. Adam! Is this part of the scenario? It is, isn't it? Isn't it? I guess so. And to show you I'm not fucking around, Lars is going to help demonstrate a death trap right now. Oh, settle down, everyone. Relax and enjoy the show. No need to get our delicates in a bunch, for heaven's sake. But something sounds off with his voice. Can we stop this for a second? I'm not sure I'm into this anymore. Please stop. There are two vents within the room occupied by Lars, and from there, after a harsh metallic sound, water started pouring in great volumes. What the? Hey, come on. This isn't funny. I haven't brought my bathing suit. Seriously, cut it out. This isn't funny anymore. It's not cool. Amusement was slowly turning into terror for Lars as the water continued to creep up from his ankles and now midway up his calves. Fuck. Lars was beating the glass with all his might using his bare fist. Bart was backing away from the glass with his eyes in disbelief and jaw agape. Vince and Earl were frozen to the spot. Adam, Steve, and Lucky were banging against the glass furiously, but it appeared to be made of something more. Pierre simply chuckled. This is crazy. Look how riled up you all are. It's really happening. Someone, someone's got to think of something. We have to think of something. Now. Are you fucking serious? Holy shit. He's right. We've got to do something. The door. That's right. We've got to try the door. We've got to bust it down or something. Lars, we're going to try busting down the door. You pull and we'll try bashing through. If that doesn't work, you push, kick, or whatever you need. We'll pull. I yell at Lars pressed up against the glass. The side of Lars's face is pre so pressed up to hear me that I can see his breath fogging up the glass. 
His eyes, I've never seen eyes like that. So full of fear and desperation. Good thinking. Lars runs up to the door that was on the right side of the room. I nod at Pierce who follows me with Vince right behind. Bart was still in shock so I had to yell out his name. We needed the biggest and strongest guys to level the store, if it was even possible. Bart looked at me all dazed. He then shook his head to clear the haze and caught up with us at the door. In the background, I could hear Lucky crying uncontrollably. You sick fuck. Just you wait when I get my hands on you, I'll crush your fucking windpipe. You sick piece of shit. Bart was screaming at the darkness, I guess hoping our host would react. Oh god, there's enough room for all of us to push on this side. The door's too narrow. Adam, we'll push you to Red Lars. Uh, sure, okay. I run back to the window and edge myself more to the left end of the glass pane. From there, I could see Lars and kind of make out what Vince and the others were doing. Steve could only shake his head side to side like a mental patient. Lucky was on his knees sobbing while Owen King tried to comfort and pull him back to his feet. Lars was pulling the door with both arms from his side, while Vince and the others tried pushing, then ramming with their shoulders and finally kicking the door from our side. It won't budge! Lars, try pushing it from your end. I move away from the glass so that the others can hear me. Vince, Bart, and Pierce's grunts echoed throughout the room, but even with all the effort, the door just wouldn't give. Exhausted, the three men regrouped with the others by the window again, each of them covered in sweat. Lars moves his hair off his face, which had gotten very damp by this point. He spits into the rising water out of frustration, bent over with hands on his thighs, paving to catch his breath. Goodness gracious, I'm glad everyone's incredibly immersed, however. Don't you all realize they won't actually permit him to drown? Hey, fuck you. I don't think this is a joke anymore. Help us figure out something out. Please, don't fight. But Adam's right, there's got to be something we haven't tried yet. I just don't understand any of this. Why? Why are you doing this to us, you maniac? Lucky screams at our unknown host. What did we do to deserve this? What has Lars done to deserve this? Leave us alone and just let us out of here. Please. Oh god, please. Well, the water's halfway up his side. Someone, think of something. So. Um... I don't know what to do. I did the demo, and but there wasn't anything for the puzzle. So if this is a puzzle room that we're in, I don't remember. Let's, let's try to smash the glass anyway. What? I said try to find something you can smash the glass with. Roger. Lars starts to look around the room for anything he can whip at the glass. Most of the cabinets and other stuff in the room seems to be mounted to the wall or floor. Damn it! Lars opens up one of the cabinets and finds something that looks like a fire extinguisher, but it's clearly not. Hey, it's some sort of tank! Lars looks at the other with a twinkle in his eye. He's too cautious to be optimistic about it, so he doesn't quite smile. Alright, everyone, back away! The others stand back cautiously, but hopeful that the glass will shatter on impact. Lars breathes in deeply, holding the tank hoisted across his chest but slightly above his shoulders. Time seemed to stop in that instant. Rah! He crossed the tank with such force that it looked like a blurry torpedo to the other men. It hits a glass and bounces right off it, leaving barely a scratch. You piece of shit! Lars grabs the tank again and instead of throwing it, holds it like a battering ram and smashes it over and over and over against the window. Over and over, he just wouldn't stop. The rest of the men looked on, some with tears in their eyes, as a heroic figure tried endlessly to shatter the unbreakable. The water itself continued to rise, and perhaps it was causing the electrical outlets to falter as the lights in the room started to flicker off and on. This, this is just cruel. Inhumane. The water had risen up to Lars's chest by this point. This is bullshit. Lars, Lars buddy, you hit that glass for all it's worth. Don't stop. Don't stop fighting. You're a Hollywood hero. You can do this. Everyone started shouting at Lars, encouraging him to keep pounding away at the window. Wait. What's wrong? 
What is it, Lucky? Holy shit. Lucky's eyes widened so much that the whites were visible all the way around. His voice became twisted and unrecognizable with fear. Oh my god, there's someone there. What on earth are you going about, Lucky? There's nothing there. I'm not lying. Look over there. There's someone there. I'm seriously. I'm serious, please. I'm not making this up. Just look. Look over there. Yeah, that's not terrifying at all. There's fucking someone there behind Lars. Don't you see him? There's someone over there. Holy shit, there is someone there. Lars! Collectively, we lost our minds. Everyone just started screaming. Screaming and pointing behind Lars. Whatever it was, it definitely wasn't there before. How the... How, when did he get there? Lars finally turns around and when he sees the figure motionless in the dark, he became completely motionless as well. The figure was hard to make out as the light kept flickering. It was behind the other glass window on the opposite side of the room. It appeared to be in the third section of the room and accessible to the others. The figure was probably male as he looked strong and was built like a man. But his face was concealed by what looked like a goat's head. Probably a mask of some sort. Pink ooze was dripping from his neck. And finally, he held firmly in his left hand, a giant kitchen knife. It gleamed menacingly in what little light there was left. Come on, you coward. Get out here and fight like a man. You fucking coward. Well, fuck you up. Get your ass out of here. Lars quickly sends toward the goat man using powerful thrashy breaststrokes. However, the light seemed to flicker faster and suddenly go out completely. Ah! What the fuck, the lights? Shit. Panic yelling and the sound of fears banging overtakes the room. Lars must be bashing on the back window. Adam and the others can make out a bit of what was going on in the drowning room by their own room's reflected light. For the most part, it was just glimmers of murky imagery and sound of splashing. Can you guys see him in there? No, not really. I hope he's alright. It was hard to keep track of what was unfolding when all the cues were merely auditory. And suddenly, the sound seems to get muffled and stop altogether. There's nothing left. Nothing except the eeriness and uncertainty of silence. Wait, what's happening? And he's dead. No. The lights finally powered back on to reveal the group's worst fear. By the time the lights had gone off, the water had cascaded and engulfing the room entirely. And in the midst of Lars's lifeless body, the once exuberant and proud man had become a silent victim, a great tragedy. Adam and the group stared at his remains as bubbles rose from below, caressing him. It soon dawned on them that this was no longer a game, and although that had become pretty evident earlier, it had only now started to sink in. None of them were safe. They were all his prey, his scraps of meat, ready to be consumed or discarded at his leisure. Adam, are you okay? Of course not, I'm not okay. How could I be? What about you, bro? How are you holding up, Pierce? I still can't believe he's, like, dead. Lars seemed like a really cool, really good guy. He didn't deserve that. And I'm not just saying that because I wanted him or whatever. What a way to go. Pierce shakes his head solemnly and pulls his cap down just a bit lower. Was he trying to cover his eyes? Lucky's eyes had lost her shine completely. He stared at the floor blankly as if it were a giant hole like an abyss. I feel bad for him. I know he should be worried about us, but my heart just goes out to him. You know, I'm sorry to say, but there are a ton of gay guys who say and do awful things. Who treat other gay guys like they don't matter. But not Mr. Bronson. He'd never do that. I've never seen myself being friends with a guy as attractive and charismatic as him. But he'd go out of his way to make me feel acknowledged and appreciated. I could have seen us being good friends. He's genuine, humble, strong, and caring. If a guy like Mr. Bronson couldn't make it, what chance do any of us have making it out of here alive? Lucky. Hey, shut up! I don't want to hear negative talk like that right now, okay? Lucky, I know Lars seemed invincible. We all watched those same movies too where he'd fight through armies of assassins or alien invaders. 
And I know he's gone now, but we can't think like that, alright? We can still make it. We still have a chance even without Lars. Lucky sniffles a bit. How can you know that, Adam? No, not again! I don't think I can stand it. The crackle of the PA comes on once more. Bart must have been furious as the sound of the clenching and grinding of his teeth was audible. Kang seemed uninterested and was instead focusing on dusting his suit off. Guys, listen, please. Now that you've seen I'm serious, we can begin the real game. You'll need to work together to get out of this room. Firstly, there are letters hidden throughout this room that bear your names. One for each of you. In it, you'll discover you've been assigned a position. Top, bottom, or versatile. The host laughs mockingly. And don't be angry if I got yours wrong. I deviated from reality with the delegation of these for the game requirements, mostly. For the entirety of our game, only two people may enter or be within a puzzle room at any time. Naturally, I've given a special exemption for the current puzzle room. Normally, if there were any more or less than two, then the death trap goes off. The two people must consist of a pairing that makes fucking sense, literally. So, no two tops, no two bottoms entering a room. You get the idea. None of you are pure enough to not know the basics of how fucking works. And remember, I'll be watching you, so no cheating. To escape this particular room, there's a single door with a keypad on it. You'll have to solve the puzzle to input the correct code and open the door. Since I'm feeling generous, and because you all look so pitiful, I think I'll give you a hint. It has to do with the order of your arrival. That's all. Let's see you get out of this one. And with that, the host is gone. That psycho thinks this is funny, I can hear it in his voice. Yeah, it's messed up. I bet he's enjoying this. Having planned this whole thing out for a while now. I bet you is some de demented fucking homophobic bastard. It's gotta be. Or maybe the goat guy is one of those Clarksless straight type freaks with all those crazy issues. Like he has a wife and kids but is so ashamed to be gay that he sets up this whole crazy massacre to punish the clock he can't get. You have all the answers, don't you? Earl speeds up, but with a soft, hollow voice. He looks completely distraught. What? No, nothing. Forget it. Well, what do you think, Lucky? I mean, I don't know. I guess he could be that. Or he could be a crazy Bible thumper with a sick brain and a lot of money. I just know that we can't guess at this point because we don't have any clue what we're up against. I think we gotta be really careful, pay attention, and not miss any signs as to what Goatman is planning. Honestly, I don't care why he's doing this. I care about being 10 steps ahead of him at all times. That's a good idea, Adam. I also think we need to sit together and watch out for each other. If we work together, I'm sure we can all make it out of here alive. Don't you think, girl? What do I think? I think I don't need a single one of you for help or anything else. You get me? You're all strangers. Who the fuck are you? I'm a shark. I can do this on my own. I don't need anybody or anything. And if it comes down to it, I'll leave behind every single one of you if it means I make it out alive. I'm not part of yours or anyone else's team, so count me out. Why would you say that? Because it's the truth, and don't think I won't do it. R walks away as if nothing happened and starts searching the darkness for the letters. I was so shocked by what he said that I didn't even have the words to interrupt. He didn't mean that. I know he didn't. I'm going to go talk to him. Lucky, I don't know if that's a good idea. You heard him. I don't think anything you can say is going to help. Just let it go. No, I don't think I can. I just can't. I'll be back, okay? They're all throwing that fucking temper tantrum at a time like this. It's so not maturity. You mean immature? Yeah. Based off that combo we just had, I think you and I should sit it out together. Or at least you meet Vince and Bart. I mean, look at those other guys. They're weak sauce. I'm sorry to say this, but they might just hold us back. I don't want to talk about this right now. I still think we ought to work together. Fine, forget it for now, but hear me out. If you stick with me, I promise you'll be safe, alright? And you watch out for me, okay? Pierce reaches out and massages my shoulders as he's saying this. 
His hands are hard and strong, and I felt like he could definitely protect me if it came down to it. We should start looking for those ladders. We can't waste any time. Oh, right. Let's hop to it, then. I noticed the other guys had begun to do the same thing and started to search the room. Some of them were all on force, fooling around for anything that could be a ladder or a clue. It was really difficult with basically no light. Whoa, what's this? As I'm walking, I felt myself kick something that flew forward ahead of me. It was definitely something like light like a piece of paper. I walked forward slowly and tripped on it again, then picked it up with a sigh of relief. I found a ladder! Who's it for? I don't know yet, I gotta bring it over to the light. As I brought it closer into the light pillar, I saw that the unopen ladder had my name on it. I found my clue! When I opened it, I saw that I was gonna be versatile. Huh, alright then, so that means I can basically go with anybody in the puzzle room. Hey, I found one too! But it's not mine, it's for you, Steve. Alright, thanks a bunch, kiddo. I have one as well. Me too. Eventually, we all found the remaining letters and exchanged them to the rightful owners. What did everyone get? Lucky let out a nervous breath through his mouth. I think we were all pretty nervous. Mine says top. Bottom. What the hell? Mine says bottom. I'm not a bottom. I'm verse. Mine says versatile. Top. Hmm. So we still only have one versatile in the group. As mine says top. I got bottom. I also got bottom. Alright, so let's see now. Ben started counting on his hands. Ugh, we're okay. Relieved, he wipes his brown, then places both his hands on his hips. Huh, what's the big idea? Uh, I don't get it. Don't you see, Pierce? It means none of us will get left behind. By Vince's count, there are three tots, four bottoms, and one versatile. Which means as long as Adam is here, he's always pick a bottom, we'll be able to make it out of this nightmare. Oh, you smart. Vince puts his palm to his forehead and lets out a sigh. Thank God, I can't even imagine what would happen if we had an odd person out. I just don't want that to be a thing. Speaking of an odd person out, it looks like you're the special snowflake tonight and not I. What do you mean? Oh, because I'm versatile? Well, I'm glad you are. It just strikes me as odd. Why just you, Adam? Your guess is as good as mine, King. Well, just remember, with great power comes great responsibility. Yada, yada, yada. <sighs> I found the door out of here. No way, we gotta check this out. Everyone followed Bart's voice and were soon huddled by around the door. They could make out the keypad as bits of it glowed moderately in the darkness. But on closer inspection, the door was securely locked and closed to the touch. The keypad itself was definitely brand new and electronic. Lucky starts to point his finger like he's going to start pressing random combinations into the damn thing. Hey, let's not do that yet, just in case. I say we think this out, or at least look for more clues first. Lucky shoots everyone an apologetic, apologetic and embarrassed look. Ah, yeah, you're right. Lars, I'm sorry this happened to you. Okay, I'm going to end this installment of Let's Meet Adam right here. Don't worry, I will be uploading the puzzle uh, tonight. Um, and that way you can get two episodes of Let's Meet Adam, since this was mainly me talking and yelling at my animals. Um, but yeah, thank you all so much. I'll see you all in just a few hours. Be right back.